Chapter 10, Columns, Homework Solutions. Homework 10.1. Knowing the spring constant at uh, D, this spring constant is K, and the column D E is rigid with a load P applied vertically down along D E. We want you to calculate the critical load. P C R P for load critical C R for critical, okay. So this is another column stability theoretical problem. Um, we have the column going down with a downward force P. So under idealized condition, if P is idealized vertical aligned, then it the D E will not uh, rotate left or right. But in reality, due to disturbance or minor vibration and other things, it may lose stability if the vertical load P is greater than certain value. Okay? So to solve this, we use the same approach, considering um, it rotates away slightly. Assuming initially the spring has zero initial internal force, neither tension or compression. And if the vertical rod is misaligned slightly from vertical location, let's say the rotation angle is a small angle theta, theta is very, very small, and let's assume it reaches equilibrium, then we can draw the FDD of free body diagram. So at the D end, we have the vertical external force going down, while at the E end, we will have the reaction force going up, uh, R E Y, and uh, and uh, let's assume it rotates clockwise. So the spring is getting a little bit longer. As a result, at the D, we would have the horizontal force F K equals to the spring constant k times this distance, this or displacement. This displacement, the length for the rod is l. This is theta, so that will be length times sine theta gives the displacement, and times k gives the horizontal force. And so this horizontal force has to be balanced by another horizontal force at the e point. So this is our r e x. The reaction force at E but along X direction. Okay, so this is our free body diagram. Now let's consider the balance of moment around the E point. Balance of moment around the E point. So the REX and REY are not considered because both force goes to the E point. And then we will have P going downward trying to rotate the rod clockwise, and the distance would be. L times sine theta, okay? So the left side gives the, mo the moment trying to rotate the rod clockwise. And then at the D point, we have the horizontal force KL sine theta going um trying to rotate the rod counterclockwise. So KL sine theta times what is the distance? This distance would be L times cosine theta. Okay? And uh, as we said, let's initially we assume the angle is very small. So the sine theta is approaching theta, but uh, they can cancel on both sides. And the cosine theta for theta is very small. Theta would be close to 1. Okay, so then the above equation would simplify L and L cancel sine theta and sine theta cancel. We would have P C R. The critical load equals to K times L cosine theta, but cosine theta is approaching one, so it cancel K L. Which means when the applied load is smaller than P C R or K times L, the system would remain stable in the vertical direction. On the other hand, when the load applied is greater than K times L, the rod 
will lose its stability and um, the string has to be much longer. Okay? Homework 10.2. A column E H, horizontal column E H, is hung horizontally by two strings. Two strings. One is at F, one is at G. With equal length. So the string at F and the string at G have the same length and also the same string constant, which is K. And symmetrically at F and G. Symmetrically, which means they are kind of like a, they are the distance from F to E is the same as distance from G to H. So we want to calculate the critical load uh, PCL. We will apply P from the left, P prime from the right. And the P and the P prime are the same magnitude along the same axis. And uh, we want you to calculate the critical load. Okay? As you can imagine, when the load is very small, the Rod will maintain horizontal load position, but when the load is too large due to non-ideal misalignment or disturbance, uh, it may rotate away from this horizontal load position. And we want you to calculate the so-called critical load, the load above which it is going to lose the stability. Okay. The solution of this problem would be similar to the previous one. We would assume initially under perfect uh, alignment, initially under perfect alignment, the strings, the two strings, one at F and one at G, have zero internal force. It, it does not go through tension or compression when it's perfectly aligned. And then, let's say the horizontal rod EH rotate, misaligned from the horizontal, horizontal line or position by a small angle, by a rotate away, let's say in this case, rotate clockwise by a small angle theta, and then reaches equilibrium, reaches equilibrium. So initially it's horizontal, and then let's say it rotates away by a small angle theta, and reaches equilibrium, and then we would would be able to draw the SPD or free body diagram. So at E side we have P towards right, at H side we have P prime towards left. On the other hand, because P and the P prime uh, assume they are perfectly parallel, but now they are displaced from each other a little bit, this a pile this pile force would try to rotate the E H rod clockwise and clockwise uh, so in order to balance the moment we need the forces by the string to counteract it let's say the force at g is tension uh, where the force at f would be uh, compression which means the in within the string which means the rg is pulling up and rf is pushing down so this pile of force will give it another moment that it tries to rotate the beam counterclockwise. So the total length for this um, beam or rod is L, while the distance between the two vertical strings uh, is B. So the balance of moment uh, around, you can choose any point, but let's say I choose the left in the E, we would have a balance of moment the P, this is horizontal force, and the vertical displacement between the two force, between P and P prime, would be L, the total length, times sine theta, times sine theta, okay? So that is a moment that tries to rotate this rod, uh, as you see, clockwise. And that will be counteracted by the pile force that tries to rotate the beam uh, counterclockwise and uh, each of the force let's say it the center is um, at the center so the, the tensile or compressive force would be k times the distance which is half of b times sine theta okay half of b times sine theta this is the whole 
total distance between the two force being T and uh, the neutral point or the zero tension or compression point is at its center. So it will be half of B uh, times sine theta. And then the total distance between these two force would be B times cosine theta. So between left and right, the sine theta and sine theta dot cancel. And um, when the theta, we said it's a small uh, deviation or misalignment. So the cosine theta would be 1. So we will have T, L goes to the denominator, 2L at the denominator, K times B square. And the cosine theta become 1. So the critical load would be KB square over 2L. So L would has the unit of meter, and B has a unit of meter, so meter square over meter become meter, meter times K. K is the spring constant, has a unit of Newton per meter. So overall, the critical load still has a unit of meter. Okay? It means when the force is smaller than KB square over 2L, system would remain stable in the perfect horizontal location. When the force is larger than this value, it will lose stability and become misoriented. Okay. Homework 10.3. A long cylinder shaped solid column has length of L and outside the diameter or OD of D. It is made of a material with elastic modulus E. So this is what we have, a solid uh, cylinder length of L and the elastic modulus of E, the diameter is D. And then if a separate cylinder-shaped hollow column, this is our cylinder-shaped hollow column, it is made of the same material, same length, L, and the same OD of D. But the inner diameter, ID, is half of D. So it's a hollow cylinder, same length, same material, same OD, but the ID, the inner diameter, is half of D. We want you to calculate the saving in weight for the hollow column versus the original solid column. Okay, how much less material we are using? And then the relative reduction in critical load, critical vertical load, for the hollow column versus the original solid uh, cylinder, solid column. So the saving in weight is just a proportional to the cross-section area because it's the same length same OD. And um, so the area for the solid one is very easy. It's just the cross-section area for the out, um, for the whole um, circle. And uh, the saving or the empty part would be just the hollow. The solid, the saving would be solid minus the hollow, which is just uh, the inner part. And uh, it would be the area ratio would be proportional to the um, ratio of the diameter square because area is proportional to the diameter square. And uh, the inner to outer diameter ratio is 1 over 2, and the squared would be 1 over 4. So 25% uh, saving in weight when we go from solid to hollow, okay, in terms of weight. Then in terms of critical load, from this chapter, assuming it's the same elastic modulus, then we will know the critical load, critical load would be proportional, would be proportional to the modulus. Uh, moment to the mo moment of inertia, sorry, moment of inertia. So the relative reduction in critical load would be moment of inertia for the solid, moment of inertia for the solid minus the hollow one. 
again, it we just uh, consider this hollow moment inertia would be just uh, the outer minus the inner. So it will be inner moment inertia over the outer moment inertia. And uh, for these um, cylindrical shaped uh, column, the moment inertia is proportional to the radius to the power of 4. So the savings would be half 1 over 2 raised to the power of 4, or 1 over 16. So the reduction in the critical load would be 6.25%. So we save 25% of material, we have a small impact, or small reduction in the critical load. Okay, sometimes people would be willing to make this trade-off. For work 10.4, we have a structure, numbers E, F, and the G, H are 4 meter long, 4 meter long from E to F or from G to H, and 32 millimeter diameter. So diameter for E, F or for G, H is the same of 32 millimeter, steel rod. And then the numbers E H or F G are three meter long. From E to H or from F to G is three meters long and uh, twenty-four millimeter diameter. So E H or F G would have twenty-four millimeter diameter. Thirty-two millimeter diameter here, twenty-four millimeter diameter. Uh, here, 4 meter here, 3 meter here. And uh, these four members are connected by hinge, and uh, also there are ropes between E, G, and F, H. So we have uh, tensile force along the rope between E, G, and F, H. And if the factor of safety is 2, factor of safety is 2, we want you to calculate the largest allowable tensile force in EG or the same value for FH. When we consider stability for the members or for the solid rods, the elastic modulus or Young's modulus would be 200 gigapascals. And uh, we want you to consider buckling only, not the material um, failure. In the plane of uh, in the plane of the structure. Okay? So this is our problem. We have a square shaped structure, hinge connection, four meter here, three meter here. 32 millimeter diameter here, 24 millimeter diameter here. And uh, you have rope connecting E and G, and rope connecting F and H. And as you tighten the rope, make it a tighter and a tighter, there will be compressive force within these four members. And as you can imagine, when you tighten it too much, these members may go through buckling. And we want you to calculate the maximum tensile force that can be applied within the rope. And uh, also, we need a factor of safety of two. Okay? So, to do this, let's first consider the compressive load in the vertical EF or GH rods. Okay? EF or GH rods. They would be a so-called two force bodies, okay, at two ends, and the force have to go along the body. The Euler formula, the Euler formula, as we got before, um, for critical load, PCR critical load for EF of a GH would be based on Euler formula would be pi square E I I for moment inertia for the cross section over L square. L would be the length for the rod. Okay. And uh, 
we put the number in pi square e elastic modulus and uh, i what is i i would be for a uh, circular or cylindrical shaped route that would be 1 over 4 pi r to the power of 4 okay and then we have pi square in the front and a pi from the monomial inertia we would have pi to the power of 3 radius still to the power of 4 and uh, the denominator would be 4 l square and if we plug the number in we would have 3.3 3.142 to the power of 3 times 200 giga, which is 10 to the power of 9 pascal times uh, radi radius. The diameter is 32 millimeter, the radius is 16 millimeter or 0 0.016 meter to the power of 4, and uh, the denominator is 4 times the length, or this one is 4 meter to the power of 2. You plug the number in, we would have a result of 6,353 newton. Okay, that will be the critical load when we consider the buckling for the vertical EH rod or for the EF rod or for the GH rod. So for the two vertical rod, we determine the critical load for the rod, which means above that value, the 6,000 uh, um, something Newton value, the vertical EF or the GH rod will lose that stability. And then, as a result, the force along, based on that vertical load, the force along the GH or EG, EG rope or the FH rope will be limited by the balance of force. So if we consider one point, we would have the force in the rope, and then we would have the uh, rod to counteract it. If we know the force in the rod, we can calculate the force, the limit of the force along the rope. And uh, that relationship is based on similar triangle. The force along the EG rope or the FH rope will be the force along the GH rod or EF rod and divided by uh, this cosine of 4 meter over 5 meter. And the further to maintain with that, we need a safety factor of at least a two. As a result, the applied force, tensile force, in the EG or FHR has to be even smaller. The allowable stress in the rope for EG or FH would be the critical load in the vertical rod divided by this shape factor and by another safety factor of two. So that will be 6,353 divided by 4 over 5, which is the cosine for this angle, and divided further divided by 2. And the allowable uh, force, tensile force in the rope, when we consider uh, EF or GH, would be 3,970 Newton, okay? Similarly, when we consider the compressive load for the horizontal E, H, or F, G rod, when we consider the horizontal rods, based on the similar OLAS equation, we would have the critical load in E, H, or F, G would be equal to pi square e i over l and uh, what is i the moment of inertia would be one over four pi 
R to the power of 4. So pi square and pi combined pi cube, E will keep R to the power of 4. And then at the denominator, we would have 4 L. And uh, when we plug the number in, we will have uh, pi cube 200 gigapascal. And uh, the radius to the power of 4, the diameter we said is 24 millimeter. Radius would be 12 millimeter or 0 0.012 meter. And uh, the denominator is 4L. Okay, or four times three meters square. We plug the number in, it will be 3573 meters. So, similarly, for the horizontal EH or FG rod, we determine the critical load above which the EH rod or the FG will lose stability or buckle. As a result, the force along the rope EG or rope FH will also be limited by this critical load. In particular, the ratio between the the ratio between the force critical critical load for the horizontal EFG to the force along the rope would be equal to 3, milli, 3 meter by 5 meter is all the sign for this angle. And we arrange, rearrange, we will have the load along the EG, E, G rope, or similarly FH rope, would just be the force along EFG divided by the sign of this angle or 3 meter over 5 meter. 3 meter over 5 meter. And further, remember we said we want a safety factor of at least 2, which means the force applied along the ropes, EG rope or FH rope, has to be even smaller. How small? It will be the critical load along the rod divided by this geometrical factor or sine for this angle further divided by the safety factor of 2. And uh, from previously we said the critical load for EH horizontal bar of FG would be 3573 Newton. Then it has to be divided by 0.6 for this sine theta and further divided by 2 and we would have the allowable tensile stress uh, when we consider horizontal EH or FG rod stability would be 2,977 meters. So, as a result, the maximum or largest force that can be applied along the EG rope or FH rope has to be the smaller of the two values that we determined. One is 3,970 Newton when we consider the vertical EF or GH buckling. The other is 2,977 Newton when we consider the horizontal EH or FG buckling. And the smaller of the two would, of course, be 2,977 Newton. And that's the maximum tensile force that can be applied along EG or along FH rope. Okay.